like this layer of dimensional reality, and it seems to manipulate space-time. I call it the speed force. It caused me to burn a tremendous amount of calories, so I am just a black hole of snacks. I am a snack hole. Sorry about that. In my opinion, super speed is the best superpower, hands down. It both has the best utility and the best power out of any superpower ever. Plus, it's one of the first superpowers ever, finding its start in the first ever superhero comic. Hugo Hercules was a weekly comic strip published in the Chicago Tribune, lasting from September 7th, 1902 to January 11th, 1903, and is considered by many to be the earliest superhero comic. Written and drawn by Wilhelm H. D. Corner, the comic strip only lasted for 17 issues. Just looking at it, one can see the similarities between Hugo and many of our favorite superheroes today. In his comics, Hugo can be seen helping civilians, fighting criminals, and even having a catchphrase with him stating just as easy at the end of each of his comics. While his main power is very clearly super strength, we actually do see him use super speed in his comics. In the 13th comic strip, entitled Hugo Hercules Comes to the Rescue of Cannonball Limited, we see a train headed for Chicago jump off of the track and break off one of its wheels. Hugo then detaches the engine from the rest of the train cars before pulling the cars along the track to the city, seemingly moving as fast as the train. While many superheroes will incorporate super speed into their power set over the years, one of the most notable ones would have to be Superman. In his debut comic, Action Comics Issue 1, published April 18, 1938, his powers were described as being able to leap one-eighth of a mile, hurdle a 20-story building, raise tremendous weights, and, yes, the ability to run faster than an express train. However, for years, whenever a superhero had super speed as a power, it was usually an auxiliary power. We didn't see a dedicated speedster until the year 1940 with the introduction of the original Flash. Jay Garrick Attending Midwestern University in Keystone City, Jason Peter Garrick majored in both chemistry and physics. During his junior year, he was working on an experiment to purify hard water without any residual radiation using a cyclotron. When that test tube spilled, he was knocked out by the fumes. Falling into a week-long coma, Jay eventually woke up and realized that he was given superhuman speed by the accident. Using this speed, he became a hero known as The Flash. Many years later, Jay Garrick would become a world-famous superhero, his tales being read across the world, including by his successor, Barry Allen. One night while working as a police scientist for the Central City Police Station, a bolt of lightning shot through a window shattering a cabinet and covering Barry with the electrified chemicals inside. Obtaining the power of super speed from the incident, Barry decided to use his powers for good, taking the name of the Flash as a tribute to his childhood idol. And that is the accident I'm trying to recreate. I have all the chemicals I need here, and tonight is the biggest thunderstorm of the year. All I need to do is press this button, and finally my dreams of a speedster will come true. <laughs> Second thought, aside from super speed, the other most common trait of speed suits is that they have an insatiable appetite. I would have to eat tens of thousands of calories just to keep up with the speeds they're eating at. I'm a broke college student. I can't afford my student loans, let alone all that food. How am I supposed to be a speedster if I don't have any money? But, I mean, comics exaggerate things all the time, right? Maybe I don't have to eat that many calories. I mean, how many calories would it actually take to move as fast as the Flash? Throughout the history of the character, there have been many, many claims regarding how many calories he needs to run at the speeds he does. One of the most straightforward answers we've actually gotten is in the CW show The Flash, when in Season 1, Episode 18, he meets with Supergirl and Jimmy Olsen for the first time, stating this. I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, well, first things first, food. I have to consume about 10,000 calories a day. Oh, yeah, you definitely met the right girl. Using 10,000 calories as a base, we need a way to convert calories to speed over time. I found a study published by Harvard University that lists the calories burned by a number of physical activities over 30 minutes by people in certain weight groups. In the activities they provided, we actually have seven listings for calories burned for people running at different speeds. Choosing the weight group closest to the Flash's 195 pounds, being 185 pounds, we can use these data points to create a line of best fit, which essentially allows us to roughly estimate the calories burned at any given speed. While not perfect, it gets us close enough for what we'll be doing today. Doing so, we get the equation y equals 73.81 times x, 
plus 0.3416, which essentially means calories burned is equal to speed in miles per hour times 73.81 plus 0.3416. Which actually brings me to my next point, speed. Over the decades, the Flash has won at wildly different speeds depending on the comp. Sometimes he's fast enough to travel the world 8 times in 1 second. Other times he has trouble catching a biker. The speed I settled on was Mach 3.3, or about 2,532 miles per hour. This is the speed Barry was running in Season 2, Episode 16 when he was fighting the villain known as Trajectory. I chose this speed for a few reasons. In the show, his speed is directly stated a few times. However, this is actually the last time it's stated in the show before he obtains what is known as the Tachyon Prototype. Which is a device which enhances the speed force in his body and allowed him to travel four times faster than he had ever gone before. It is also the fastest he goes up until that point, as it is clear he needs to focus and exert himself to reach that speed for even a second. Since he's defeated everything from evil speedsters to giant gorillas at this point in the show, anything faster than this would realistically be overkill. Finally, this version of the Flash is actually a lot slower compared to many other versions of the Flash. Using this speed gives us a speed that is more than enough to catch most criminals, but doesn't expend any unnecessary calories. Doing that, let's go back to our equation and plug in these numbers. If we take our 2,532 miles per hour and substitute it in for x, we find that we would need 186,887 calories to run at that speed for 30 minutes. In order to find out how long we would be able to run if we only had 10,000 calories, we would need to take 186,887 calories and 1,800 seconds, the amount of seconds in 30 minutes, and divide them by 18.6887. Doing so shows that if the Flash is eating 10,000 calories a day, he would be able to run at Mach 3 for 96.3 seconds, or about a minute and a half. But this actually isn't the only time Barry states the amount of calories he needs to run as fast as he does. In Green Arrow issue 26, for example, Barry states that he needs to eat 50 times his body weight just to keep up with the calories he's burned. In the same panel, Green Arrow mentions that it's probably expensive to keep up with that sort of calorie intake, specifically pointing out tacos as the food Barry could eat. According to the USDA, a hard-shelled taco with beef, cheese, and lettuce is about 156 calories per 69 grams, or about 2.3 calories per gram of taco. Taking Barry's weight, which is 195 pounds, we can convert that to grams, giving us 88,450.5 grams. Multiplying that by 50 gives us 4,422,525 grams worth of tacos that the Flash needs to eat. With 2.3 calories for each gram, the Flash is consuming 10,171,808 calories per day. Because that is over 50 times more calories than is needed to run for 30 minutes, we can actually multiply both sides of the equation by 54.53 to show that if the Flash consumed that many calories, he would be able to run at Mach 3 for 97,974 seconds or over 27 hours. With this amount of calories, we can actually apply the formula to a much faster version of the Flash. A Flash whose speed actually does the character justice. Get it? Cause, cause the Justice League, you know? Just, all right, just, just hold it up. Still with the base quartz sand fabric, abrasion resistant, heat resistant. Uh, yeah, I do competitive ice dancing. What they use on the space shuttle to prevent it from burning up on re-entry. I do very competitive ice dancing. According to NASA, space shuttles re-enter orbit at a speed of 17,500 miles per hour. Plugging that into our equation, we find that we would need 1,291,675 calories to run at that speed for 30 minutes, which is still pretty far into the calories we're consuming. Multiplying both sides by 7.88, we find that with over 10 million calories, we could still run at that speed of a space shuttle re-entering orbit for 14,184 seconds, or just under 4 hours. Which, on an average day, is a lot more time than you'll ever need fighting crime or, let's say, petting every single dog in a pet store. But the issue, as always when it comes to Taco Bell, is within the meat of things. If you wanted to eat 50 times the Flash's weight in tacos, you would need to eat 
60,095 tacos. Three country tacos at Taco Bell cost $5.79, meaning that you would have to spend $371,110 on tacos per day. Even ignoring the cost of toilet paper, you would need five times the salary of a forensic scientist just to afford to eat enough tacos in one day to move as fast as the flash. But that pales in comparison to the cost that you would need to cover the speeds that the flash sometimes reaches for only one second. Wally West, the third flash, who derives his powers from the same source as Barry Allen, claimed to have moved at nearly the speed of light for 0.001 microseconds to save an entire city from a nuke. However, if you actually do the math, the flash isn't moving nearly as fast as the speed of light. He is moving 13 trillion times faster than the speed of light. Even to move one speed of light, you would need an infinite amount of energy, which is something no amount of tacos or even anything in the universe as we know it could ever give you. Which means even if you had the Flash's powers, and even if you ate non-stop all day every day, you just never could move as fast as him. I just, I don't get it. Even for the fastest man alive, to even attempt to reach those speeds, you need an infinite amount of energy or something. But maybe, maybe that's what he has. In DC Comics, the thing that gives every single speedster from Max Mercury to Barry Allen their energy is something called the Speed Force. The Speed Force, if you don't know, is an energy field that surrounds all the universes in the DC multiverse and essentially makes sure that time runs smoothly. On multiple occasions, this Speed Force has been stated to have an infinite amount of energy. So, theoretically, because it spans infinite universes, it would have infinite times infinite energy. Compared to 13 trillion times infinite energy, it's theoretically possible for a flash like Wally West to pull 13 trillion times that infinite amount from that pool of infinite infinity, meaning it is actually possible for them to run at speeds that we see in the comics. Now you might be wondering, if the Speed Force has an infinite amount of energy to give speedsters, then why do speedsters get so hungry? Well that actually comes from the nature of the Speed Force itself being a finite infinity. Now stay with me here. In the DC Universe we know there is a definite end to time, which also means the Speed Force is completely out of energy. We also know that the Speed Force has a defined starting point of energy when in Crisis on Infinite Earths, Barry ran back in time and became the Speed Force. If something comes from a finite beginning and has a finite end, but at some point has an infinite amount of energy, it's not only a finite infinity, but there needs to be something feeding into that to get it to infinity. I believe that when the speedsters are not using energy from the Speed Force, they're acting sort of like a portable charger where they're taking in calories and then sending it into the battery that is the Speed Force. So essentially, the speedsters are giving the Speed Force energy, so maybe one day they will be able to use that energy to go faster than humanly possible. Which means I don't have to eat thousands of dollars worth of tacos, which means I can actually be the Flash. Wait, the Speed Force doesn't actually exist. Hey, I know this is where the end card is technically supposed to go, but I do have a short little message just for posterity's sake. It's about 2 a.m. the day before I'm uploading this, and Parker Y, who is a TikToker that I follow on TikTok, shouted me out uh, because of a very long story regarding live streams and fan fiction. Uh, I did just want to say thank you so much again, Parker Y. I know I've already thanked you on a few platforms, but thank you for shouting me out. If you are new here, uh, based from Parker Y, uh, please leave a like, please subscribe. I'm going to try to pull out content a bit more regularly. I'm um, just trying to figure out exactly what I want to pursue with this series. And I think I finally have an idea. I hope you guys enjoy it coming up. And yeah, if you don't follow Parker Y, I like the five people who don't, uh, please follow our Instagram, or not Instagram, TikTok, Parker.Y. And yeah, thank you so much, Parker. Uh, 
Also, uh, check out my other video about if Vision is technically a human or not. I think it is worse than this video, but it'll still give you a pretty good idea of what I'm trying to do going forward. Thank you.